A circular oil spill is growing. Its radius is increasing at a rate of 10 feet per minute. When the radius is 2,500 feet, what, is the, what rate is the area of the oil spill growing? Okay, so this is what we call a related rates problem. This is a classic application problem from Calculus 1. Okay, so for one thing, we're not going to be using X and Y, at least not appropriately, I think, is not a good choice. And then secondly, we have to set this up with like geometry or some sort of relationship equation. Then we have to introduce the calculus, like the derivative. And then we have to interpret sort of what's going on from like the, the knowns and stuff. Okay. So I suggest anytime you have something like this, it's a good idea to write down your knowns. Okay. So we're working on 14 here. So it says, a circular oil spill is growing. Okay, so it grows. So if we don't get grows, we did something wrong. Its radius is increasing at a rate of 10 feet per minute. So let's stop and think about this. So its radius is increasing at 10 feet per minute. So what is changing? Remember last, uh, last time we met yesterday, we said calculus is all about the rate of change. So what it what exactly is changing? The right. So it's the change in radius with respect to what using calculus? Yeah. So do you see that it's dr dt? What I recommend you write, and that's going to be ten feet per minute, right? By the way, the units kind of help you because feet is a distance that's like radius. Minutes is a time. So the units actually help you kind of stack up that fraction, if you will. Mm -hmm. And by the way, a derivative is not a fraction. It's just, it's a rate of change of one variable with respect to another. So you could think about it like a fraction. Okay? Sort of. All right. So there we go. 10 feet per minute. When the radius is 2,500 feet, so R equals... 2,500 feet at some instant of time. So there's going to be some instant. And an instant of time, the radius is 2,500 feet. We want to know at what rate is the area of the oil spill growing. The rate at which the area of the oil spill is growing could be characterized by what sort of a derivative? D-A-D-T. Yes, very nice. D-A-D-T, the change in the area with respect to time. So let's put a question mark on that, shall we? Because that's kind of our goal. Okay, so far? Yeah. Okay, so that's all just writing down the knowns in sort of a condensed shorthand form. And I think that's a useful thing because that way... We're trying to translate English language into mathematical language here, right? That's a key part of word problems. Even back to, you know, middle school and elementary school, right? You, word problems, like the teacher was always like, got to translate it into mathematical language, right? Like, that's, that's the main part of word problems, right? Okay, so there we go. So it looks like we need some sort of equation that relates A and R together. Now, we know what the shape here is. It's what sort of shape? Yeah, it's a circle, right? There we go. Nice, beautiful circle there, okay? With that circle in mind, how is the area of this circle related to the radius? Exactly, because this would just be R, right? The radius there. And we know that area is equal to pi R squared. Okay, so let's just write that down here. The area is equal to pi r squared. Now, by the way, whenever you're doing these related rates problems, it's important to come up with the basis equation, like the equation that relates things together. Because in this case, area is a function of r. But now, this is the important step. We're going to hit both sides with a calculus step. We're going to hit both sides with what sort of operator? D over yes. D. Yeah, d over dt, right, because we were interested in the time rate of change. Now notice, d over dt is an operator. It hits this guy and it hits this guy, right? So when it hits something, you know, think about a derivative like a hammer. Bam, hits something. If it hits something and that something is not the same variable 
like R is not T and nor is A T. So given that A is not time and R is not time, you have to think about implicit derivatives, which I know you and I worked on just for one problem yesterday. Mm -hmm. That's because A area can be a function of time and R, the radius, can be a function of time. So we have to think about implicit derivatives. So with that in mind, d by dt of a is just what quantity? Exactly, it's dA over dt. Then what's going to be the right-hand side here? So we have to be careful. How do we take the derivative with respect to time of the right-hand side? Yep, so it's going to be 2 pi r, keeping the pi out front. Oh, not squared. 2 pi r and then dr dt. Exactly right. Because dr dt is the rate of change of r with respect to time, that's where the implicit derivative comes in. dA dt is 2 pi times 2500 feet times, and then dr dt was, yeah, 10 feet per minute. So that's going to be, let's see, 2 times 2500 is 5000 times 10, I think should be 50,000 pi feet squared per minute. And think about those units. Notice it's an exact value. Like in math class, usually if we can, it's nice to have exact values, like say in terms of pi or whatever. Mm -hmm. Notice the units though, feet times feet up per minute give feet squared per minute. But that should hopefully make sense to you because it's an area. So even the units multiply. Feet times feet is feet squared, because that's area of the circle. Okay? So you could imagine that, I mean, here's my sketch, right? But the area of this thing is moving outward in all directions. And by the way, do you also notice that the rate of change of the area with respect to time depends upon 2 pi r, which to me sounds like the circumference does it make sense as the circumference grows so does the area yeah. that kind of makes sense right 2 pi r times dr dt i mean seems reasonable to me if the circumference is getting bigger well the area is getting bigger <laughs> easy enough yep is that okay yeah